Greetings to you all and to God be the glory. What are you supposed to do when you desire for somebody to be healed or you desire for somebody to receive deliverance, but they refuse to come to church with you or they refuse to come to a prayer meeting with you or maybe they don't even want to meet with you. Maybe they don't even want deliverance or maybe they don't want healing or they don't realize or think that they need that and you can't bring them to a place to where people can pray for them, lay hands hands on them and deal with the issue head on. What are you supposed to do? I've got good news for you. I'm going to share a principle of spiritual warfare with you that will boost your confidence and your ability for God to use you as a vessel of his power and glory. Check this video out. Glory to God and greetings to you all in Jesus' name. Let's talk about long distance spiritual warfare. Let's talk about long distance healing and long distance deliverance for people who don't want to come to church or people that don't go to church or they won't come to a prayer meeting that you invite them to. But they still need healing nonetheless. They still need deliverance nonetheless. Maybe they believe that God will heal them. Maybe they believe that they can receive deliverance, but they just won't go to church. They won't come and get prayed for. If that's the case, that's not a problem. The Bible gives us plenty of examples to show us what to do when we have a situation like that. We can do long distance spiritual warfare. We can do long distance deliverance and we can do long distance healing. Uh, well, it's not us that does it, but it's Jesus that does it through us and through our faith. We can be vessels of his power and glory. Let's look at some biblical examples that show us these ideas. Long distance deliverance. This is something that the Syrophoenician woman experienced. Let's go to the Bible. Mark chapter 7, verse 25. And this is what the Bible says. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And then we're going to skip a few verses and go to verse 29. And he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. I don't think that she brought her daughter with her. I think that in a desperate attempt for her daughter to get delivered, she came to seek Jesus. Now, in this story, she was rejected several times. And there's a time that God didn't even pay attention to her. He didn't even answer her and he rejected her. But she had faith that God can heal his uh, her daughter. And Jesus does. She's not right there in front of him for Jesus to rebuke the devil out of her. But Jesus does this remotely. He does this long distance. And that shows us, one, the power of our faith and what God can do remotely. The problem doesn't have to be directly in front of you. The problem doesn't have to be directly in front of God, but you can go to God on behalf of somebody else who needs deliverance, who needs healing, and you can petition God for them. Someone can receive deliverance from demons because you approach Jesus. That's what this story teaches us. How many of you can think of somebody right now that you know for a fact this person is vexed? with a devil. This person is tormented or possessed with a demon and they need deliverance, but they won't come to church. They won't come to a prayer meeting. This is what you do. You go to Jesus without them. Let them be where they are. You go to Jesus and you seek his face. You go to the throne. You make petition on their behalf. Your faith has the power 
to get God's attention to do a miracle in someone else's life who may not be aware that they need that miracle and they may not be willing to come themselves. But you have the means to provide long distance deliverance. This is so powerful. Every believer needs to get this. This is a principle of spiritual warfare that we all should learn. Long distance deliverance. You can pray for somebody. You can stand in the gap for somebody. They don't have to be right there. And you can deal with the demons in their life. You have the ability through your faith and the power of God, of course, to set them free remotely or at long distance. This is the art artillery of spiritual warfare. Your prayers are like artillery missiles in spiritual warfare. So if they don't want to come to church with you, if they don't want to come to a prayer meeting with you, if they don't want you to pray for them directly, go into your closet, your prayer closet, go into the secret place and start launching some bombs of prayer on their behalf. You can meet with Jesus wherever you are and call on his name on their behalf and he can set them free. Maybe this won't take a day. Maybe it'll take two days. Maybe it'll take three days or four or five days. However long it takes, it doesn't matter. Continue to pray on their behalf until they are set free. Just like the Seraphonician woman, she continued to push and push and push until she got what she wanted and Jesus commended her for her faith. He called that great faith and he will do the same thing for you. The question is, are you determined enough? Do you have the faith to believe in spite of being rejected that God will deliver this person from demons? Oh, he can do it. Get it and watch the power of God unfold in everybody else's life for whom you are praying. Not only can there be long distance deliverance from demons, but there is such a thing in the Bible as long distance healing. Jesus can heal remotely. You don't have to be right there to lay hands on the person. You don't have to be right there to oil them up. Maybe you heard of a situation where somebody is needing prayer in another city, in another state, in another country, and you feel helpless. You don't have to. Your prayers are like long range missiles. You're petitioning God on someone else's behalf can get them the healing that they need. <clears throat> Listen to what the Bible says here. Matthew chapter eight, verses five and six. This is the story of the centurion who asked for healing for a servant. And the Bible says in verse five, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. This person did not come with the centurion, the person that needed the healing. They were at home being tormented. They couldn't get to Jesus on their own. So the centurion went on their behalf. And just like the centurion, you can go to Jesus on behalf of somebody else and petition for their healing. All it takes is faith. It's just a matter of faith. Listen to verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. If your faith persists until it reaches Jesus, if you have faith, enough until you can get a response from Jesus, a favorable response, because God can tell you no, and that's a response, but it's rejection. But if your faith can outdo any rejection that it might encounter, you can obtain healing for somebody else on their behalf. You can go to Jesus and pray for somebody else to be healed. And if you have faith, 
that God will do it. If you have victory faith, overcoming faith, if you have enduring faith, persistent faith, you can get healing for that individual. Maybe it's a family member, mom, dad, brother, sister, sibling, a distant relative, or a friend. Maybe it's somebody that you don't even know. You can have faith on their behalf to get them set free from demons or to get them healing that they desperately need. It's just a matter of faith. The question is, do you really believe? If you do, God can use you to perform miracles in the lives of those that won't or can't come to God themselves, but you can be the key. You can be the plug. I hope that this has blessed you and amped you up to start praying for people. Pray for everything that comes across your mind concerning healing and deliverance and salvation for those that you love and those that God lays on your heart to pray for. Go and be empowered in Jesus' mighty name.